Hey guys, so we're back on Emacs and uh, we're going to keep going on our journey. So this time we're going to cover kind of the appearance of Emacs and also some uh, Lisp tips that can be useful if you're planning on kind of customizing your Emacs. So as of right now, I kind of reverted my configuration back to a state where there was no team loaded. And now I'll, I'll kind of go ab about showing you how kind of the teaming system works and how you can customize Emacs and all these kinds of stuff. So I usually don't do most of my configuration, my customization from the ELISP kind of configuration file, but you also have kind of a nice uh, pseudo GUI interface that you can use in order to kind of customize Emacs. So you can bring it up by pressing meta and then X, and then you call the customize function. And this kind of opens this little interface. You can't really use uh, the HJKNL if you're using VMO, uh, EVO mode on this on this kind of uh, buffer type, but you can move about by using Emacs's uh, moving movement key, so Control N and Control P to move forwards and backwards. And essentially, you can click on any one of those either using your mouse or you can press this, the um, return key on top of it to kind of browse the different uh, customization groups, which are kind of the categories. So, for example, you can change faces, which are fonts. You can uh, change kind of the uh, kind of the behavior. You can remove kind of that little uh, tooltip at the top and the menu bar, the scroll bar, all this kind of stuff. You can do this from here. But what I usually do is I prefer to do it from a configuration file. And just so you guys have an idea, so this is kind of my my init.org and my initial elisp file. And uh, one of the things that I usually do is I remove kind of the scroll bar, the toolbar, and the menu bar, and you can use these lines in order to do so. And as always, we have a very nice documentation system on Emacs. So this is in fact a function call. This calls the scroll bar mode, and then I feed it the minus one parameter. So if you have any, if you have any questions regarding that, you can look at the manual for this function by pressing Control H and then F on top of the word. And then notice that I get kind of the manual page for it here on the right. So if you if you ever get confused on what the arguments to some of those functions are, you can always look at the at the declaration here. Um, again, this is one thing. So you this essentially removes all of the declaration. This is something that I don't like. If you want it, of course you can leave it. And another thing that's nice is line numbering. So you can toggle kind of the line numbering mode by using by using this function. And I can even uh, feed it them, uh, feed the, its manual. And then this function it looks at some at some variables. In fact, so you can uh, you can notice that there is this variable that I declare down here. And just before we get to anything else, the set queue statement is kind of the statement that uh, essentially changes variables on uh, elisp. So the syntax is usually I use set queue, and then I give it the name of the variable that I'm changing, and then I can either give it a list or a value. In this case, I'm giving it a, a list with only one element. And you usually de designate lists on um, on elisp by using this kind of uh, this kind of interf uh, this kind of syntax again using the single quote on top of uh, on front of it. So this essentially sets the line mo numbering to be relative, which is what I'm used to again from Vim. So VI usually has that. And it's much easier to know how many lines do I need to jump. For example, if I want to go down five lines, I just uh, I just uh, take this number again. I just look at the number that appears on, on the left of the text that I want to jump to. Uh, another useful thing, this is not necessarily a customization on uh, appearance, but this is essentially kind of uh, the prompt style. And in fact, you can change the prompt from being a yes or no prompt, which require you to type in the whole word yes uh, or the whole word no by replacing it with, their, uh, with a Y or N kind of prompt. So it's simpler to kind of type, type in. And we already covered that, but you can also set your keys by pressing, uh, by using this kind of function. So the global set key, it takes in a keyboard kind of macro. Uh, this uh, and the, this macro is given to it by this keyboard function. So every time that you see a parenthesis in Lisp, you're going to essentially see a function call. That's why uh, that's why there are so many parentheses everywhere, and we'll get to that in the we'll get to the details of that later. But this should be a good start. And uh, now getting to theming. So theming is also very important for Emacs, and there are usually two ways uh, to uh, to kind of deal with uh, with theming. Uh, you can either install your themes from Melpa, and this depends on whether or not the developer of the team has put it up on Melpa or you can just uh, download it from source. So as of right now, I have no theme installed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment this little part here 
and this is going to use, I'm going to simply use the use package statement in order to download a team. So in this case, the team is named Dracula team. And you can also use a configuration type of macro because you not only need to install the team, but once you have it installed, you also need to uh, load it essentially. And you load a team by using this little function, which is called load team. And if I open up its manual, you notice that there is kind of a no confirm argument that appears here on the after you the, uh, you give the name. And in fact, if I do the if I execute a list function without kind of the the second argument, it's going to prompt me if I want to trust this team or not. So the the t the t here is useful if you want to just uh, download uh, load the team without asking without Emacs asking you to confirm whether or not it's safe. Um, so if I run this little code by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl C, in this case this is an org mode file, I can evaluate it and notice that I load that in. So this is what the Dracula theme looks like essentially. And this is one of the ways to kind of uh, do it, but you can also download themes directly from source, in fact. So I'll just comment that back in. And uh, in the case of loading themes from source, you usually have kind of a GitHub repository where the team where the theme is, and then you can just git clone that inside of a specific directory. So in this case, what I do here on this line is I'm adding an element to a list, and this list is the list uh, that Emacs holds, and this list kind of determines where Emacs looks when it when it searches for themes. So in this case, in this case, I'm appending to this list this kind of place, which is my home folder themes, and this is kind of the directory that I designated where I want to load in my teams, my custom teams. And uh, as an example, so I kind of went to this website, and this is kind of the best website you can look, you can go to in order to look for teams for Emacs. And I just browsed a little bit. I found the modus of modus vivendi teams uh, team kind of interesting. So I just went again to open the page. You notice that you can get it from Melpa, but uh, I just wanted to open it from source. So if you go to the source, you usually get to a GitHub repository, and then you can just again use the link in order to clone it. You clone it wherever you want on your file system, and then you take those two .el files. So those .el files, which are what determines the team. And I did just that. So if I open up a terminal, I go to my .emacs, .emacs .d. I have my teams kind of directory set up and uh, I have those two teams there. So uh, now what I can do is I can load those in. So as an example, I can use the modus vivendi team and then same syntax. So I just load it in. I press Ctrl C, Ctrl C to execute the Lisp. And now I have this kind of dark team modus vivendi the in in the in the case of this uh, team specifically, they come with two variants. So I also have the modus operandi, and again, I just uh, declare them the same way. So I don't really like a uh, bright team, bright uh, team. So I'm going to switch out of this immediately. So another diff uh, interesting package that you can use if you want to kind of try out different teams is what is called try. So in, in fact, try is essentially a package that lets you try other packages. So I find it most useful if I want to try out themes, for example, because then I, if the team is available on Melpa, I just need to kind of uh, try it. And it, what it does is it essentially loads again that uh, package into memory without really downloading it. So it's stored in a temporary directory and as such you lose the, the package that you tried uh, right after you restart your Emacs session. So for installation, again, installation is rather, rather simple. So you just use your package installation method, I use the macro use package. And then once it is installed, I can just issue the meta X and then try command. And let's say that I want to look for a team. So since I'm using Helm, I'm going to see which them teams are there. So for example, <clears throat> let's take this a, a hungry team. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go to those kind of a repository. So you do need to refresh your repositories before you do that. And now I'm trying a hungry team. So what I can do is I can then issue the regular load team command. So if I can type it correctly, load team, <clears throat> and see that a hungry appears as an option. So if I type that in, I get uh, I get kind of this uh, again kind of trust thing that I that I mentioned. So Emacs is going to ask me if this uh, if this team is trustable or not. So I'm going to uh, load it as yes. 
and uh, then I'm going to treat it as safe and notice that this is what it looks like. <clears throat> So this is it with regards to kind of appearance. A last thing that you have is what is called the, the global H outline mode, which I find useful. So this is essentially what highlights my line. So you'll notice that as I'm moving on this buffer, the line where I'm at, the horizontal uh, position, the vertical position is kind of a highlighted. And another useful package that goes with that is, with that is Beacon. So Beacon essentially kind of uh, gives a nice effect whenever I move. So you notice that if I press uh, uppercase G to go to the bottom of the document, I kind of get a little highlighted, uh, uh, I, I get kind of a little effect, if you will, whenever I move. So this is also this also happens when I'm kind of m moving in the file using Control E. So this is useful again if you're jumping around large files and you're going to uh, and you're going to different and you're jumping page by page, for example. So this is kind of unuseful again little thing just to not only for eye candy but also for functionality because it's easier to see where you are now these are kind of the again the customizations that i did so if you guys are interested you can always read the kind of the manual but obviously you can also send me comments so if you have anything any question uh, do leave them as comments down below and uh, that's pretty much it so see you next time guys bye bye